We're filming the Great Balls of Fire Challenge in Portland, Oregon. This is right when the show started becoming popular. On my dad's grave, first episode where anybody had said, I love, first time I ever heard love your show came because I knew you were here. No one had ever said that shit to me about anything. You know what I mean? And, you know, including like a relative who had seen me in a play, like, I was, you know, I came here for you. So this, this recipe called for, I don't know how many pounds of habanero in the fritter, in the sauce, so spicy that when I clapped my hand at the end, a speck went in my eye and I couldn't see. I basically had habanero poisoning. I didn't know that habanero peppers can approach a level of just sheer toxicity, uh, but I had habanero poisoning essentially. So I'm out in the parking lot talking shit with my PA and a great work. And yes, I'll happily write a recommendation for you, whatever we're talking. Oh, where should we go drink? What's what's going on? Oh, this is why I should check out on the day off. Okay. Yada, yada. And then all of a sudden it felt like I had gotten kicked in the stomach from the inside, like a fucking mule. Like, oof. so I doubled over in the parking lot and they're like, you gonna be all right. Like one second. I run in. I'm like headed for the John. I'm they're trying to stack like chairs on tables. I'm like gangway, you know, boo, bitch, get out the way. So I'm like, oh no. So I'm like pushing my way through. I get to the bathroom. I didn't know if I wanted to puke, shit, die, cry, pray. So I just literally, I sat there. The toilet was closed, fully clothed, holding my abdomen, going. Okay, whatever happens, and like mentally planning, like, okay, if it's gonna come out both ends, head in the sink, ass on the toilet, you know, you're making five grand an episode now, you can afford a mop, sure. you know what I mean? So I'm there, and I just sat there doing deep breathing and meditation and whatever, and eventually the pain kind of subsided. Um, I went home with someone that evening, and I remember, like, you know, it's like, you know, it's over. No, you know what? I got to go to the restroom. I'll be right back. And like then, all of a sudden, like and she knew exactly what I had been up to. Flash forward to the end of the season. We're filming in New or end of part of the season. We're filming in New Orleans. My director was leaving to go just be a showrunner, and his wife was pregnant. He was heading home, and I wanted to win. And I had to eat 180 oysters, and it ruined oysters for me. And I had just had a breakup too, and I just. And, you, you know, I'd taken a shot to my ego. And I met this really pretty girl at the casino, the Harris in the French Quarter. Mm. So we start talking in this. And all of a sudden, some dude who I guess had been at the challenge walks by and goes, careful, girl, that guy just had 180 oysters. <laughs> I'm like, why you got to cock block me, man? <laughs> Was it hard eating 180 oysters? Awful. Really? In the very beginning, because oysters are great quality. Sure, sure. And I worked for the St. Bernard Project and... Gulf Coast seafood took a huge hit. A lot of people lost their livelihood with that spill. And um, I really wanted to showcase as much Gulf Coast seafood and give these people a chance. I used to live in Alabama for a year, and I went down to Gulf Shores and Eufaula and Foley and Pensacola and all these places along the Gulf Coast. And they these people took a huge hit because even if they're you know, harvesting grounds weren't decimated by an oil spill. People had no confidence in Gulf Coast seafood sure. after that. So it, I was like, I'm going to champion Gulf Coast seafood. I'm going to fucking beast this. I'm going to go out and see some titties in New Orleans and drink some hurricanes and have some gumbo. And uh, uh, I used to go down to Mardi Gras, you know, got me a new show feeling like, yeah, you know, sure. Billy Big Biscuits. And then, uh, I was, this is, again, y'all won't find this on camera because I didn't know about clearances and rights for songs. So I'm eating this thing. I get up to about dozen 11. I had to eat 15 dozen. Just even thinking about it makes me feel some kind of way. Ugh. And there was a table next to us with these, like, the dudes who kind of, no no, no hate, y'all, but they kind of like, they, they, they shop from Sky Mall. Like, mm -hmm. those dudes definitely mm -hmm. are like some Sky Mall shoppers. Um... They were like really intense, but they were very funny. And I finished Dozen Eleven and I saw the bucket was like over there, but I didn't want to outwardly shout like, you know, make you move the bucket closer because I knew everybody would be like, oh, he's going to go. So I finished Dozen Eleven. I take the first bite of Dozen Twelve, which sounds ridiculous, of oysters. And I went, traveled so far. I said, came so far, I can't stop now. 
And then I jokingly go, to change this lonely love. And they all laughed at me and the guys next to us. We start going, I want to know what love is. I want you to show me. And then my director was going, stop. Everyone's going to stop. We can't clear that fucking song. Please. We, we it was so close to the end of the challenge. Please don't sing that song. And I was like, because it got my mind off of sure, it. And sure, I was like sure. eating and like galvanized. And everyone's like, God damn it. Ah, oh, shit. But you know, everyone in New Orleans is a little bit fucked up, you know, in the quarter. Sure. So we're eating. I finished Dozen 12. And all of a sudden, there was like this older guy, literally out of a movie, in the back of the thing goes, I want to feel what love is. And I was like, and we're like singing it. And so that's why if you watch, they, they quickly go to a time lapse during those last few oh dozen God. because we're just there. And I was like, Oh, I want to know. And I'm sitting there just blasting through these oysters, just crushing it. And, uh, I, I remember it. I couldn't, it, texturally, I couldn't do oysters till the pilot episode of Man vs. Food Nation almost three years later. And, and every so often still, like I'll go, I'll do eight from this two dozen platter we've gotten and I'm going to tap out. Because it's just, after a while, it's just consistency. Sure, you have sure. no flavor. You know, that was... Man versus food jacked up a few different foods for me. You know, like a Denver. I was never a Denver omelet guy, but I will never fucking be a Denver omelet guy ever again. Mm, like, mm. oh, it's terrible. But, you know, not for nothing. These restaurants were mom and pop shops and they all did great business. You know, one to 300 percent increase in business during the single worst economic time for an independent business owner. And to know in some small way that a kid who came up in the independent business had something to do with that. Sure.